Hi everyone, today we're going to finish this Fokker D7 we've been building for the past couple of weeks. And honestly, I'm just as eager to get it off my workbench as you probably are, so let's get right into it. Let's start off by giving the model a wash. I'm using this Tamiya dark brown panel liner to accent a lot of the details on the surface. A wash is essentially a very diluted paint that accents a lot of the details, and we can clean up the excess with some enamel thinner. There are not much details to accent with a wash on this model, so let's move on to shading with oil paints. And I'm using those three colors to accent the ribs on the wings. So I'm adding some of the dark brown oil paint onto the red parts, and then I'm just carefully blending it with a large, soft, and dry brush, just to make them a little more subtle. And I do the exact same thing on the white bits, except I use a light gray oil paint. But, same exact process. I add a little paint on the stripes, and then blend it with the soft brush. The result makes the surface a little more interesting, and also emphasizes the internal rib construction of the wing. To add some weathering on the wheels, I add a little bit of black brown oil paint on the border where the tire meets the rest of the wheel. And then after that, I blend it again with a large soft brush. This could emphasize dirt buildup or grime or whatever these wheels would collect on a dirty World War I era airfield. After that was complete, I secured the wheels onto the um, wheel uh, landing gear strut? The landing gear axle? I don't know what to call it, but yeah, you get the point. Then I used a Tamiya black wash to emphasize some of the details on the engine. Then as usual, I clean the excess wash with a cotton swab. Then I sealed everything with a layer of flat varnish. This unifies all of the paintwork as well as the decals under the same matte texture. While that's drying, let's build and paint the machine guns. Those consisted of drilling out a hole in the barrel, cutting off that barrel, sanding, bending a piece of photo etch, bending a piece of photo etch with tweezers this time, gluing that photo etch on, gluing the bolt operating mechanism, gluing the barrel back on, gluing the ammo counter on, and cementing the ammo belt collection tube. A lot of work, but pretty significant difference in the end. Let's paint them with some Tamiya gunmetal because, you know, they're guns, so gunmetal. And then we can secure them to the fuselage. And yeah, the casings got ejected right into the pilot's face. I'm sure that didn't get annoying really fast. Before we can start putting everything together, there's a few things we need to get out of the way. One of which is drilling shallow holes for the control cables and bracing wires. After that, I secured the landing gear, making sure to keep everything straight at all times. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot, I needed to paint some more details in the cockpit before I could mount the top wing. So, I painted the ammo belt collection tubes in silver, and I painted the back parts of the machine guns and the wrapping around the cockpit in a leather brown color. Okay, now I can start mounting the top wing. I glued the struts to the lower wing and the fuselage with liquid cement and let them dry to the point where they wouldn't fall off, but they were still able to move a little bit. Then I placed the top wing on some paint jars and started mounting the wing. This is a pretty tough and fiddly process for a few reasons. The first is that these wing supports are pretty thin and they have a lot of strain on them, so it's pretty easy to break them. The second is that we have to use glue very sparingly as to not harm the already painted surfaces. But with a bit of patience and precision we can pull this off, and by patience I mean I let the glue dry overnight before I even picked up the model to put the rest of the struts in. Then I decided to modify the anometer bit, which consisted of drilling some holes in the windmill spinny thingy. This was basically a rudimentary speedometer. The incoming air spun the little windmill on top of it, and the dial displayed the incoming airspeed. 
I brush painted the wing struts with red and black just because I find it easier to brush paint these after they're already glued on rather than airbrushing them, holding them awkwardly with a pair of tweezers, and then gluing them on, trying not to wreck the paint job. Then I glued the photo wedge dial to the anometer and painted some of the brass details with Tamiya gold leaf. Next, I decided to make the turnbuckles for the rigging. And for that, I took a little piece of copper wire that I ripped out from an old cable, folded it in half, then I took a pair of pliers and this super advanced, ultra professional turnbuckle making tool that I made from bending a wire in half. I gripped the wire with the pliers, inserted the other tool, and started twisting, and twisting, and twisting, and twisting, and twisting, and twist, and more twist. Ah, oh, well, you get the point. Eventually, we get this lovely looking turnbuckle. Okay, now we can super glue them to the holes that we drilled earlier, and also making sure that they face the correct direction. I used the 0.3mm rigging from ammo, and I tie it onto one turnbuckle, I pull it through the other one, I tie it there, secure everything with super glue, and yeah, it's a very, very fiddly process. Luckily, there's only a couple of these rigging spots, unlike some other planes. But before we move on to rigging the rest of the plane, we have to deviate and do some more weathering on the other side. And by that, I mean speckling. I took some brown diluted oil paint, loaded it onto my brush, and with a toothpick, speckled it onto the bottom of the aircraft. They represent random accumulated mud splashes. The rest of the rigging on smaller details I like to do the old fashioned way, with stretched sprue. I find it's easier than trying to stretch a wire in these small, hard to see spots anyway, so I don't bother with it. Then of course I painted all of them black, to not have them stand out as much. Let's move on to painting the figure. Unfortunately, the face was really hard to film, but essentially I base coated it, then added a darker red wash, and then some gradual highlights. This also applied to the rest of the uniform, first the base color, then shadows, then gradual highlights. One common rule amongst figure painters is to paint light on a figure as if it's standing in a hole in the ground, so light coming only from the top parts and the parts that would be facing the bottom would be a lot darker, if you understand what I mean. But I'm not a figure painter and you really shouldn't listen to me when it comes to these things and yeah you could see that by the result. It could be a lot better but it also could be a lot worse. They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just So yeah let's put them in the plane so we can hide the majority of this horrendous paint job. The fit was pretty tight and so I didn't even need to super glue him so I just put him in and he's now just kind of chilling there. And the last thing I did was attach the propeller in place and paint that propeller bolt with the Tamiya metallic grey. And yeah, no, that's it. That was the last part. It's done! Yeah. So, okay, what do I think of the finished product? Well, from an engineering standpoint, the kit was really well designed. The kit went together without any problems for the most part, and even the top wing was mounted without many issues. But even with all of that, I still would not recommend this kit to any beginners. Sure, it may not be the most complicated biplane I've ever built, Albatross I'm talking to you, but still, I think biplanes in general require a greater amount of skill to construct over a lot of other warplanes on the market. But if you're up for a challenge, this model can definitely be turned into something beautiful. Well, that's going to be it for today my friends. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like if you enjoyed, and tune in next time as we crack open a new model kit. As always, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this series, and I'll see you next time. Peace.